Hello world. Today we're at the Molecular Physiology and Biophysics Department at the University of Iowa. I'm going to give you a tour of the lab I work in. Um, you might ask, well, why am I giving a tour? Uh, well, it's cool, but I've been thinking lately about exposing the world to what we do in the lab every day. Sort of an open science uh, initiative, open source science initiative. So as we walk in here, uh, the first room that uh, I use a lot is uh, a gel electrophoresis room. Uh, so over here, um, this is where I prepare a gel, um, and over here is where we prepare the lipids. Um, so you might be interested, well, what do we do in this lab? Uh, we're really interested in uh, uh, protein folding is more of the general topic area, but to be more specific, what we do is we're trying to find the free energy of protein dimerization, the free energy of uh, proteins that find their mirror image partners in the lipid membrane. Uh, and that's really important since about 30% or so of all diseases stem from uh, misfolded proteins. So over here this is my workbench. Uh, this is where I come every morning and do what I do. Um, there's a lot involved in uh, biophysics research. It really is a, uh, like a cross between physics, mathematics, chemistry, biochemistry, biology. It's really where all the sciences almost come together and, and meet. Um, what I am most interested in is more along the lines of the, the fundamentals. Um, so I do a lot of theoretical work. Um, I, I'm at this whiteboard. Um, very often trying to figure out, you know, how do we actually go about uh, uh, describing these systems. Um, I was supposed to give you a, uh, a tour of the lab, but I'm more, uh, I kind of tended towards talking about more so the, the concepts and what we actually do in the lab, which is more important than actually showing you all the nice and fancy equipment. Um, but, then again, it's pretty cool. Um, so this little guy over here is an FPLC system. Uh, what we do is we just use it, it's a, it's a size exclusion column, and we use it to uh, find the, uh, the size distribution-ish of uh, the protein, the membrane protein, uh, CLC-EC1, that uh, we study. Um, over here is a fluorometer. Uh, we mainly use this to do uh, something called Forster Resonant Energy Transfer Experiments. Um, and then also we have uh, a very cool uh, optical setup. Um, we're not allowed to go in there right now, but uh, that's a uh, total internal reflection uh, microscope that's in there to do single molecule studies. So, more back the lines of uh, what I'm mainly interested in is uh, studying the, the fundamentals, the foundations um, of, of these uh, systems. And the biggest problem that we run into when we try and describe living systems is that the underlying statistics of how uh, thousands of atoms behave is not very well understood at all. In fact, all of modern physics really ends where life begins. Um, and this is demonstrable. Uh, we know this. Um, so all of thermodynamics really is, thermodynamics itself is really only a very special case of a much broader uh, Boltzmann-Gibbs statistics. And Boltzmann-Gibbs statistics uh, is only a unique uh, solution to a set of problems um, that are formulated under certain assumptions. Those assumptions are, uh, the primary assumption is uh, ergodicity, which for those of you who are not familiar with these terms, this terminology, ergodicity, uh, the most part basically states that uh, every microstate, another term used, is equally probable. Uh, so. In, I guess the takeaway from that is uh, ergodicity is an assumption we make in physics to allow us to calculate things like entropy, free energy, um, uh, and all sorts of different thermodynamic variables. Um, 
problem that we uh, face is living systems are not ergodic. We can't use um, our uh, statistical toolkit really to investigate those. Um, and something quite, I don't know, I find maybe quite profound to think about is, sure, life breaks ergodicity, um, but where else in the universe is ergodicity broken? Is it only broken on Earth? Um, it goes back to the question of, is there life elsewhere? And if not, why? Um, you know, these are questions that physicists don't usually ask since it's not really... Uh, these questions are quite kind of frowned upon to ask um, these types of questions, but they need to be asked. Um, so this is just the first video among many uh, that I plan on uh, sharing with you guys. Um, thank you.